Hi everybody, I'm Nettie Kay. Welcome back to my studio for part four of our series on how to become a real artist. Now if you haven't watched one, two, and three, go back and watch them. Everybody else did. Uh, so we need to build up on one principle after another. And these are super easy concepts, but I think they're very important for you to kind of uh, be able to move forward in your art. So last time we met, we talked about gesture drawing. I know that baffled a lot of you guys. And uh, so what I'd like to recommend, uh, if that was a bit of a frustration for you, would you go on and visit um, one of the sites on YouTube by Stan Prokopenko. He goes by Proko, which is P-R-O-K-O. He's one of the best drawing instructors that I know. And uh, he also does a section on gesture drawing that is just outstanding. And he brings in somebody that is a, an expert on gesture drawing, not just himself. So watch that and then don't forget to come back to me, okay? So now let's get on with my favorite lesson uh, of this particular series called the five tonal values. So what do the five tonal values mean? Does it mean something like the value of my painting? Does it have anything to do with money? Well, indirectly it kind of does if you sell your paintings because if you don't use more than at least, at least three values in your painting, your painting's gonna be very flat. And so we wanna be able to, uh, to, do, um, to master at least five tonal values instead of just three. Now, what I'm saying, what am I saying? Well, if you want to have something look three-dimensional, you need at least three tonal values. And this is what they are. A middle tone, which is halfway between black and white, a dark, and a light, okay? I'm going to take it one step further. I'm not going to go as far as some people and do 10 values or 9 values. I'm going to say let's master 5 tonal values. On my palette here, I have uh, a bunch of different tonal values that I've mixed in oil paint. Now I have a black down here and I have a white right here. Halfway between black and white is this middle tone right there. And then I have a darker rendition of the black and with a little white. I have a lighter rendition of the gray as well. So I have five tonal values. I'm going to use the white for a highlight, the black for a cast shadow, and the other things to get kind of the basis of what I'm painting down. You got that? Let's do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to decide what I'm going to paint or the shape that I'm painting and I'm going to mask that in in a general middle tone value. Let's start with a, a line down the middle and I'm going to mask in the basic shape of my vase. I'll make it a little bit fatter on the bottom like this and we'll just mask it in. This is just one way of doing it rather than drawing a whole you know lines all the way around it. I can generally get something a little bit uh, more accurate if I do it this way. You can do it whatever way you like, but I'm massing this in and uh, let's make it a little bit uh, wider out here, a little wider, maybe a fat little belly on it like that. Looks kind of like a pear. Okay, there's an idea. And uh, we'll make the neck of this thing kind of come up like that. Now, at the top, I'm going to give this a little bit of a, uh, let's just give it a little mouth of the jar. Okay, just a little bit like that. Okay, so here's our middle tone kind of mapped out. Everybody got that? Middle tone masked in, kind of drawn around, and then you're just looking at it. It's masked in with one tonal value. And now I'm going to come into my darker tonal value. And I'm, and I'm, first off, I'm going to tell you, I've got the light coming from over here and hitting this side. Okay, so here's my darker tonal value, and I'm going to put that on right there. Here's my darker tonal value coming around. I'm massing it in. Dark gray, like that. And I'm also going to put in a little bit in the inside of the lip of that jar because the light is not going to hit on the inside of that jar. So there we go. 
And then I'm going to come over here with the lighter color. So not the lighter color, the lighter tonal value. We're not really using color today, are we? No. Here's the lighter tonal value. And so I have this. It's almost too light. I'm going to pull it back a little bit. That almost looks like white. Okay, so now I'm going to put this lighter tonal value like this. Because I have wet paint underneath, it'll blend in fairly well or, or kind of fuse in with the color down below. So I have my lighter color, and so it's, a, it's not stark white. I'm going to blend it in just a little bit with that, that darker color underneath. I have a middle tone to start with, a dark, and then a light. Now you can tell that's already starting to look three-dimensional because it's got three values, all right? Dark, middle tone, light, there you go. And so next, I'm going to take the uh, lighter color and it's gonna come over here and it's gonna hit on the inside of that vase right there, okay? So that really looks 3D, doesn't it? Yes, it does, all right. So on top of that, I'm going to now go in and I'm going to think about this part as though it's sitting flat on a table. And so I'm going to now add a cast shadow. I'm just kind of, on this particular angle, I'm just gonna come straight across like that, about an inch up, and then I'm going to kind of base that in with that. Uh, I don't want it really super sharp on the edge, everybody, because you know what happens, they, it looks like there's a hole in the table. So I'm gonna take that like that, and I'm going to take a little rag or something, and I'm gonna soften the edge of this a little bit. Soften the edge just a little bit of the shadow and uh, we'll see, oops, I'm making a mess here. All right, and then as, it, as the parting line, my brush is very thick, so I gotta be careful. Uh, I'm gonna put that back in just a little bit. I'm not worried too much about accuracy, you guys. I'm just trying to get the principle down for you at this stage. So we have a little cast shadow there. So I have a, a middle tone, a dark, a light, a cast shadow. What's my last fifth? tonal value. It's the highlight. Yeah, see if we can get that. This is straight white. I think I'm going to use a smaller brush this time. Well, this is a good one. It's all busted up. Oh, well, it still works. The expensive end of the brush is still intact. All right, now I'm going to grab some straight white, and I'm going to think the light is going to hit in line with where the, the object sticks out in line with the light. Okay, so if the light's coming from over here, it's gonna stick out right about there. And I'm gonna put in a little bit more of that light kind of right along here. And that's pure white. And then I'll fuse it in a little bit. Just a little bit, fuse it back and forth with my little brush fuse it back and forth a little bit, and there it is. So there's the light onto the vase. And let's see what else. I might have a little bit over on that side right there. And it might hit just on the edge, just a little bit there. There we go, like that. Okay, good. Now I want this a little bit lighter over here. I'm just going to put this in just a tiny bit lighter because I want that to look a little lighter on the light side of the vase. This is going to be darker. Now, if I want that to really stand out, I'm going to come back with this brush, and I'm going to take my darker paint. Oh, first off, I want to put this on a table, don't I? Yes, I do. How do I make that look even more three-dimensional? Well, I'm going to put in a tabletop. I'm going to put a line there, jump over my guy, and there I have it right there. And there he is sitting on a nice table. So uh, I can now come in and adjust the shape of that by putting a tone next to the jar or next to the vase like that. And it's dark on the light that, on, on the side that it's light, and it's light on the side that is dark. It's just weird. It's called Rembrandt lighting, and that works really well. We've got a little bit of dark there. Now I'm gonna come in with my white, and I'm gonna lighten this up on this side. And then I can, I can keep shaping it to where it's accurate. I'm not gonna worry about its accuracy right at the moment, but I can kind of keep shaping it out a little bit like that. 
and I make that dark look even darker by the contrast of what's behind it. Okay. I'm going to do this a little bit more right down here just to trim this shadow off to where it kind of butts up against the jar just a little bit. And I'll work that in little by little. And then I'm just going to hit that the very top of that paint so it doesn't stand out too much. Okay, I'll need to make this a little lighter on this side. Boy, I got a big glump of paint right there. Right on that side. And then I'm going to get a little rag and take off that big wad of paint that got jumped on there. And rub that in. All right. Well, that's pretty three-dimensional, isn't it? Yeah. I hope you learned something today. Hey, what did we learn? Well, we learned that everything that we want to paint, pretty much, we can mass it in in a middle tone, add a dark and a light along with a cast shadow and a highlight, and we can impress our friends like crazy doing stuff that looks super three-dimensional. Yeah. So I hope you'll try this at home and uh, let me know how you did. Next time we meet, we're going to begin with a little bit of the art of color. And so I know if you've had some problems with paintings that are just really flat when it comes to your color application, this one's for you. And we're going to be just delving into it one after another after another from here on in. So join me next time for lesson five on how to become a real artist. Share with your friends. And don't forget to visit my Etsy site if you get a chance at nettykstudio.etsy.com. Thanks again so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.